So these are the Shock the Game 5.0s from Anta. And yes, they are a Chinese sneaker, both designed and made in China. However, Anta is the largest Chinese sportswear brand in China. So could these realistically compete with something like these? Well, the answer may surprise you. Now I'm in the game, I was on the bench. On the bench. First I was renting, now I'm collecting rent. Run it up. First it was the beamer, now I want the bench. Spending all the back, like here I go again. Outside says the chirp, now the camera phone. Told you I'ma make, keep the channels on. Why you acting different when the camera's on? Why you acting different like your paper long? Alright, so first let's talk about why I'm comparing the Shock the Game 5.0s up against the Zion ones from Jordan Brand. First of all, the Zion ones were the last sneaker that I reviewed, so they're still kind of fresh in my mind. And second, this does come from a Chinese-based brand. So if you're an American consumer like myself, and most of you guys are, there's always going to be some sort of stigma or some doubt on whether or not it's actually a good product. Even though pretty much all sneakers are made in China and Anta has done some great things with the Klay Thompson signature line. So I kind of want to go through each category just to show you guys how well something like this from a Chinese based brand stacks up against one of the marquee names in the sneaker business, Jordan Brand and Zion Williamson's first signature sneaker. And the first category I want to talk about is the traction. Right off the bat, the colorway that I tested of the Zion 1 uses a translucent rubber outsole. Although there are some colorways that feature a solid rubber setup, but as for what I have here, the experience was not satisfying. The outsole would slip and slide during a variety of movements, no matter what type of floor that I was playing on. It's also worth mentioning that this outsole does pick up a ton of dust. So wiping is going to be absolutely necessary pretty much every chance you get. So that's in between plays, in between games, right when you get on the court. And shoot, you might as well wipe them off before you get off the court as well because you don't want to be bringing all this dust inside your gym bag, if you know what I mean. Now with the Shock the Game 5s, these use a full length weight pattern with a solid rubber outsole and the experience is much more consistent. Anta has always had a really good track record when it comes to their traction and this setup is no different. However, there are a couple of small nitpicks that I do want to mention here. First of all, the durability of the outsole kind of surprised me because the Shock the Game line from Anta has always kind of been known as their outdoor friendly lineup of sneakers. But if you take a look at my outsole, I'm already starting to see some significant wear and tear. And that's only with indoor use after about 20 to 25 hours of play. So the overall durability of the outsole was slightly disappointing to me. But the good news is the coverage is there. You're going to feel very comfortable, very stuck to the ground, no matter what type of floor you're playing on as long as you keep things consistent by wiping the outsole because these do pick up a little bit of dust, not nearly as much as the Zion one, but it is a good idea to keep things tacky, wipe things down whenever you get a chance. And lastly, the fit of the Shock the Game 5 does kind of affect the traction, but I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later in the video. But at the end of the day, the coverage is there and if these two sneakers were in my gym bag, and the floor that I'm playing on is absolutely trash. I'm going with the Anti Shock the Game 5.0s all day, every day. All right, next up, we got the cushioning. Now, Anti is using what they're calling a flash edge, which is made up of an expanded thermoplastic polyurethane material, which is a mouthful, but it is advertised to give amazingly high rebound. However, I found that this setup has more squish than amazingly high rebound to it. And that is something that I'm personally not the biggest fan of. 
Honestly, this reminds me a lot of what New Balance has been using in their Omnis line with their fuel cell foam, where it gives you some rebound, but for the most part, your feet are really sinking into the midsole here, and the energy return is just not as explosive as I would like it to be. Now, this doesn't mean that this is a bad setup by any means because cushioning, remember, does come down to personal preference. And I personally like something that has a lot of bounce, a lot of rebound, something that's very explosive, but someone else might like something a little bit more plush, like what Anta has to offer here with their A-Flash Edge setup. The Zions, on the other hand, have a much more explosive setup with a large zoom bag in the forefoot, as well as a full length air strubble, which provides a setup that gets your foot as close as humanly possible on top of all that zoom goodness, and the experience is both smooth and explosive. So just based on personal preference alone, to me, the Zion one is the more superior setup, but only if you're looking for something that has a more explosive feel to it. If you want something that's a little squishier, the shock the games will do the trick. However, I do think you're gonna have a lot more fun in the Zion ones. All right, next up, let's talk about the fit. Now, this is the category that I think is the most troublesome for both of these silhouettes. As I mentioned in my review, the Zion one fits really long, and I highly recommend that you go down at least half a size, but by doing that, you might run into some issues with the width of the silhouette itself, since it isn't the most forgiving and the lockdown wasn't as secure as it should be. In fact, the fit was probably the most disappointing aspect of the Zion one. But when it comes to the Shock the Game 5.0s, it is better, but not by much. Now, I do want to clarify that I do think that these fit true to size. I know it's always a concern when you're buying from an overseas brand. You're not really too sure what you should get in terms of size, but I do think these fit true to size. Both the width and the length of this silhouette are true to size, so I wouldn't recommend going up or down in any way. But when it comes to the overall security and lockdown of this silhouette, it's not perfect. Now, I found myself really trying to lace these up extra tight because I just felt like there was a lot of wiggle room inside the shoe itself. Not because it was super wide or super long. Again, both of those areas are true to size but just because the materials didn't really fit around my foot as close as I would like them to. So I would lace these up super tight, but after I did that and started moving around in them, I started to feel a pretty excruciating pain in my midfoot, probably because the midsole wraps up over the footbed. So then I started to loosen up the lacing system and this would lead to a kind of looser, not as secure fit. And this would lead to slippage inside the shoe which would then lead to the outsole not performing as well as I would like it to. So overall, the fit here is very sloppy, but technically the width and length are true to size. I don't think my foot would be very comfortable if I went up or down half a size. Now the Zions are not true to size. So technically the fit here is better. So I'm going to have to give the Shock the Games the win here, even though I'm really only picking between the lesser of two evils because the fit in both of these silhouettes is not ideal. All right, next up, let's talk about the materials. Now, both of these models do use synthetic materials, but one approach is vastly different from the other. And while I do like the look of one of them over the other, it really comes down to function over form. The Shock the Game 5s no doubt have a very visually striking look, with solid color blocking as well as a variety of materials that all have different textures, but at its core, it's still a synthetic mesh material with a thin plastic overlay, which helps maintain its flexibility, but also add some durability as well. Now, obviously this large TPU overlay on the lateral side is the big feature here, but on the medial side, there's also a large overlay as well, but this time Anta uses a synthetic Nubuck feeling material but the concept is the same on both sides. This overlay or these overlays are supposed to wrap around your foot for a more secure fit. But like I mentioned in the previous category, I didn't really notice it that much. So I feel like these features here are more of a visual one than a performance one. The Zions on the other hand have a much lighter and more refined setup. And while it may not look as interesting visually, it's still just synthetics when you get down to it and I do prefer a lighter feel with my materials, 
so I'm going to have to give the Zions the win here just based on function alone. I also didn't feel any pain or discomfort in the Zion. So even though both of these models are made up of kind of cheap synthetics, technically my foot was happier with the Zions. All right, so the last category we're going to talk about is support. Now with the Zions, these use a more minimalistic approach with simple features such as a slightly extended lateral outrigger as well as internal heel cup. It's simple, it's straightforward, but due to the lackluster fit of the silhouette, you're not really able to take full advantage of those features. Now, when it comes to the Antas, these just flat out have a lot more going on with their support system. You got an internal heel cup as well as an external heel cup as well. There is a slight outrigger on the lateral side of the outsole. There's also a carbon fiber shank in the midfoot for torsional support. And you also have an A-shock stabilizer in the midsole for added stability. There's just a lot more going on here with the support system, but there is a downside to having a more robust system like we have here. During the break-in period, your foot will feel more fatigue. So you might want to take this shoe off in between games just to kind of allow your foot to relax a little bit. It just works your foot out more. So it's going to feel more tired over time. But like I said earlier, this is just one of the cons or the downsides to having a more robust system. So if you need all the support you can get, the Antas are going to be the pick here. But like cushioning, support really comes down to personal preference. So if you want something that's lighter, faster, more simplistic, you're going to want to go with something like the Zions, but technically the Antis have more support. So I got to give them the win here by definition. All right, so if you're keeping score at home, the Antis did win the category breakdown three to two, but does that definitely mean that they're the better sneaker? For me personally, if I had these two sneakers in my gym bag, I probably would go with the Antis because the traction was just that much better and the fit was closer to true to size than the Zions were. It's also worth mentioning that the Shock the Game 5s do retail for about $99, whereas the Zions are going for $1.20. So depending on your budget, price might be a factor. And even though I am disappointed in the outsole durability of the Shock the Game 5s, at the end of the day, these are the more well-rounded sneakers. So if you're thinking about the Zions as a potential pickup, Maybe you should just save about 30 bucks and go with something like these Antas or something else in that price range. Because when it comes down to it, besides the cushioning, the Zions don't really have that much to offer. Making it a silhouette and a model that has more negatives than positives. And I'm just not too sure it's worth the hassle or your hard earned dollar. Now, if you're wondering where you could pick up the Shock the Game 5.0s, I will have links in the description box below from a reputable site I personally have cop sneakers from this site myself, so I know it's always kind of a weird thing when you want to buy an Anta sneaker, you don't really know where to buy them. So check those links. That pretty much takes care of this video. If you enjoyed this review and comparison, please drop this video a like because it helps me out a ton and subscribe to the channel for more sneaker related content just like this. My name is Jaren, it's good having you. Have a great and awesome day. Go play some basketball. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.